When I was looking for my next screenplay to write, I wanted a story that was original, but also centered on a female lead. So I did a little research, and then I discovered that one woman to ever play in the NHL. Any player is going to NHL tryout is under a lot of pressure. So now imagine being a rookie, French, and a woman. Nobody knew what to expect or what would happen, especially me. Manon's story is unbelievable. She did what no woman had ever done before. She did what no one even dared to dream could be done. All I kept thinking was, I have to tell this story. It's been 25 years since Manal Rayon made history by playing in a preseason game for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Very excited to welcome her to NHL now. Manal, you've had a lot of time to reflect on that game and what you've accomplished. What now, looking back, was your favorite moment from that game? Like, what sticks out? What do you remember? I remember everything about the game. I remember the moment how I felt the walk from my locker room to the ice. I was so nervous. Uh, my heart wanted to beat outside of my chest. And <laughs> as soon as I stepped on the ice, it kind of went away and, and, and it was nice. And I also remember we started the game and we got a penalty right away. And so we were on PK right from the start. So I'm thinking to myself, oh my gosh, that's not a great way to start the game. But it gave me a chance to have a few shots right away and, and get into the game. And uh, that made me feel good. Yeah, I'm sure when you get a little bit of action really, really early on in the game, at least it's like the nerves are gone then and it's just like time to play. So that's probably <laughs> like a blessing in disguise. It was. <laughs> no, how, how influential or uh, how important would you say Phil Esposito was back when you played your first game? He was, a, you know, he, it changed my life basically to give me a chance to go to training camp and believe in me. And I remember him telling me that um, he was nervous too because my performance was not only about me, but it was about the organization and him making the decision to bring me in a training camp. So I had a lot to live up to uh, during that game. It was not just for me, it was for the team, for the organization, for Phyllis Bozisto, for everyone. First off, I would love for you to tell Pascal I said hello. We were obviously part of a cup winning team together. And uh, anyways, to move forward, I, when you look back, I mean, being a, a trailblazer and somebody that has uh, really been the pioneer of something like that, do you ever pinch yourself and wonder, do you get any feedback still where you're like, wow, that was unbelievable that that was me? You know, when I look at the NHL right now and I see like the caliber play and thinking that I was there once, um, you know, playing in one of those NHL games, it's kind of unreal. Um, I think I was crazy <laughs> back then to even think about facing those shots and especially the equipment I was wearing. Uh, I had the same shoulder pads that I wear when I was playing peewee. Oh my. Uh, my dad just had a couple of protection. <laughs> and I look back at those shoulder pads, and if you show that to any goalie in today's uh, game, they would say you were crazy to have <laughs> gone to the training camp with that. Crazy and brave. You know, I grew up playing hockey. My sister grew up playing hockey. When you're out and about and you meet either girls that are playing hockey or women that you know have aspirations to either play for their national team or go to the Olympics or even do what you, what you did, what do you tell them? What advice do you give girls that have those dreams? It's the work ethic to me and believing yourself. Uh, you can achieve anything you want if you work hard. And that was one of the things that uh, I had to do. I had to work harder than everybody else. A lot of people didn't believe in me. Uh, I have to prove myself all the time. So that's really what I tell them to do. Well, what would your son Dylan say about you? Another goaltender <laughs> flying his trade at Notre Dame. What would he say or what does he think about everything that you've accomplished? You know, we have this uh, great relationship between, uh, you know, Dylan and I because uh, he's living a little bit what I had to deal being a smaller goalie. Um, you know, a lot of people doesn't believe in him and he had to prove himself every single time he's on the ice being a smaller goalie and, and he's determined to prove that he can do it. And I like that determination, but he works hard for it. Uh, you know, if you talk to any one of the, his coaches, that's what he would tell you. That he's probably the hardest worker on the team, and uh, he wants to get there. Is he proud of his mom? Yeah, and he, of course, he's uh, he's happy that I've been through it, and uh, that we're able to have to share that and to have that in common, and um, to really sometimes things that he does. I used to do the same thing, and it's funny to see that we're <laughs> we're thinking the same way. You know, uh, something simple like at the end of a warm up, I always had to catch the puck on my glove 
before I leave the warm up, and all of a sudden, when he was younger, I was watching him doing the same thing. I'm like, I never told him that. That's awesome. <laughs> the apple so doesn't fall cool. far from the tree, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I'd love to ask you: uh, Was there, in, in your time and in your experiences, one guy that shot the puck where you're like, "Whoa, this is big time right now"? I, I, is there anybody that jumps to your mind? You know, during training camp, I have to tell you a lot of them because I felt the puck a lot. <laughs> I had bruise all over my body. So those guys can really shoot. And it was amazing when you do an NHL training camp and then you go down to the IHL and the East Coast Hockey League and you can tell the difference of the level of shots and speed and everything else. So that was really cool to, uh, to experience. But I also remember that the first goal I get scored on, believe it or not, I never watched the game right away after and I was not really happy about that first goal. And I thought for the longest time it was a long shot. And all of a sudden, 20 years later, when they had an highlights, I look at the goal and I was like, that was not bad. It was actually from the top of the circle. <laughs> it took me 20 years to feel better about it. <laughs> We're our own worst critics most of the time, I think. Uh, before we let you go, we checked out your Instagram and saw a throwback Thursday picture that you posted with Jason Priestley. Um, <laughs> I just want your thoughts on uh, meeting him and sort of how that happened, because he was in his prime then. Yes, and I was a big 90210 fan <laughs> back then, so I remember doing this. You and um, <laughs> <laughs> we were we all, all were. Hey, I was hey, hey, that's not, hey, show. that's not a, that's a compliment. <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous, to be honest, that's why I had to ask you about it. But it was really cool because we did this exhibition game, and all of a sudden someone come up to me and said, you know what, Jason Presley wants to take a picture with you. And I tried to play it really cool and said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> but I was really excited about it. <laughs> that must have been such a weird moment to have, you know, someone that you watch on TV be like, I want a picture with her. So that's pretty cool. It was pretty cool. Listen, thank you so much for doing this. Congratulations on, on being, you know, an inspiration to a lot of women and girls everywhere. Thanks again. Thank you.